The brothers in all of the literature from the earliest, Papias, P-A-P-I-A-S, in, in the first century, knows that Mary and Clopas had four sons. Look at my James book. James, Jesus, uh, James, Josies, Simon, and Judah. Judas. Now we know a lot about James, Simon, and Judas. Could be Theudas, sometimes called Thaddeus, sometimes called Judas of James, sometimes called Judas the brother of James, sometimes called uh, <laughs> a numerous other names. And depending on what literature you get, you have to read my James book on that. And I say that Josies we don't know anything about. But then look at the name Josies. Take the vowels away. Josies. It's just Jesus again. So my conclusion from all that is since we don't know anything about Josies, the fourth brother of Josies is in fact <coughs> Jesus himself. And what I have basically said that as a supernatural Christ divorced Jesus from his brothers and created a new person, a supernatural being. Mothers became sisters. That's in the Gospel of John. Mary, the sister of the mother of God. <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I, I'm not saying it very well. <coughs> Brothers became cousins or milk brothers. Fathers became uncles. And Jesus, or himself, turned into his own brother, or vice versa. I'm not, not getting it right here. My friend here has uh, come in here and started traveling with his baggage, so I'm a little thrown off from what I was trying to say. Sorry. That's all right. Why, why don't you sit on that chair there? Would you give him that chair in front of you? That will really help me concentrate. Yeah, turn that one around. Give him that chair. Sit here. <laughs> no, he's got this chair next to him. That's cool. We got such a big turnout today, I can't, I, I'm really uh, throwing off my my face. Anyway, uh, let me see if I can get that a, a little better. As the doctrine of the supernatural of Christ gained momentum in the second century, um, yeah, I guess that's the mothers turned into sisters, fathers turned into uncles, uh, and Jesus, if you like, or <laughs> or turned into his own uh, turned into his own brother, or something like that. And these are the things that I think happen as you've got the conflict of the supernatural Christ with the natural Christ in people's minds. So we have, why are we talking about it here? Because Jesus Barabbas represents another such person, a character. I want to say one more thing about Jesus Barabbas before moving along. That character, and we've now we've mentioned a lot of things now, the Samaritan Messiah, Jesus, Ben Joseph, and so on. Uh, the Messiah, the son of Joseph. That um, Character I mentioned in the very early part of the class, I didn't bring it, uh, I should have brought it today, uh, Josephus' picture. Jesus ben Ananias is the prophet who um, appeared seven years before the fall of the temple. Seven and a half years, 62 AD, right after the death of James. And he never stopped calling. Jerusalem is doomed, Jerusalem is doomed, Jerusalem is fallen. It's in Josephus as one of the signs for the destruction of the temple. I told you about that character at the very beginning of the class. I hope, didn't I? I think I did. But if I didn't, there you have him again. Very important episode. Josephus links him with uh, armies riding across the sky. Heavenly host coming on the clouds of glory. Uh, I think a cow gave birth to a lamb in the middle of the, of the temple. Okay, very exciting. Or a lamb gave birth to a cow, I'm not sure which. <laughs> the doors of the temple flew open of their own accord several times. And finally at the end, the priest heard the voices crying out, Let us go forth as the Holy Spirit or whatever it is left the temple. He's got all the signs important for the fall of the temple. And he also talks about the star prophet here. And the fact that the young men were zealous for it. And this was the main thing that led the revolt against them. It's a very important uh, part of the Jewish war. It comes at the end. And among those things, he talks about this Jesus by Ananias. And he's arrested by the Roman governor. And he doesn't speak 
when he's questioned. And they flail him and beat him and do all kinds of... He hasn't done anything wrong. He's not even like Jesus. He hasn't even done anything wrong. And they flail him or beat him with this. That Mel Gibson would have had a great time with him. And uh, they, they do whatever they can to this poor guy. And he, will, and he will not stop uttering his cry. So then finally they throw him out and they release him. You see, you get an arrest and release there. But he keeps on going around, bemoaning for seven years without end. Mm -hmm. You know, in early Christian literature, I tried to point out, there was a, supposed to be an oracle that after the death of James, the Christian community in Jerusalem was told to leave Jerusalem. There's the oracle. There it is, in Josephus. Right there. That's what they're talking about, but they put it in different terms depending on who he's talking about. And he's saying Jerusalem is doomed. Why is he saying that? Probably because of the death, as the early church literature puts it, of the righteous one. That without the support, as the early church literature puts it, uh, Jerusalem could no longer remain in existence. So the righteous one is the pillar of the world. When they removed the righteous one, they, remo they removed, shall we say, the support, uh, and so on and so forth. But that was James. Then Oregon, I cover all the stuff in my James book, which I think is a pretty good book. No one else ever covered this stuff, ever. Um, I still get phone, emails and phone calls about that book almost on a daily basis from people, which is really odd to me. Um, uh, it's Oregon and Eusebius complain about Josephus. I think Jerome, too. And because in the copy of the war or that they saw, Josephus said that Jesus that Jerusalem fell because of the death of James, not, not Jesus. And they said... He's wrong, he's wrong, he should have said Jesus. But in our copy of Josephus, Josephus doesn't say that anymore. Where might he have said that? I think in these uh, things about this Jesus ben Ananias, or in the material about where he talks about the death of Ananias ben Ananias when he um, explains uh, that, and describes his death in exactly the way early church people described James. I can't speak any more about that, but I can say that some of the material about Jesus ben An An Ananias seems to me to go into the portrait here. Now there's another book called the Slobotic Josephus that Robert Eisler parses in huge detail. Uh, the Slobotic Josephus, I mean. Which was a text that came th down through Russian Old Slavonic, Byzantine Old Slavonic sources. And there it, 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 it had some different things about um, um, what, Jesus, what Josephus may have said about Jesus, if he said anything. And one of the things that is in that um, portrait is uh, 